So everyone is talking about the Ukraine. Russia reportedly has over 100,000 soldiers on uh, or near the Ukrainian border, I should say. And <clears throat> the United States has over 8,000 soldiers on alert in case something happens, although the United States is not going to be helping Ukraine with soldiers' boots on the ground. Um, America won't go beyond providing Ukraine with weapons, arming insurgents, and uh, providing uh, equipment and logistics, because America knows that if it goes to war with Russia, uh, it would be an absolute nightmare. Because if Afghanistan and Iraq were enough to exhaust the U.S. military and, I should add, the American general populace, then imagine a war with Russia. I mean, <coughs> Americans by and large are exhausted by war enough. And that's just with what the U.S. went through in uh, Iraq and Afghanistan. Imagine Russia. Imagine fighting these extremely, extremely uh, militarily efficient Russian soldiers who have a very long history of war, who have a very long history of militarism, who are also a very proud people and would be extremely tenacious in the battlefield and would not be willing to have an easy surrender or to give an easy surrender. This isn't the Taliban. This is Russia. These are the people who ran the Soviet Union. These are the people who just decades ago had an empire. So America can't afford having a war with Russia. America will back proxies against the Russians, just as it did in Syria or just as it, just as it did in uh, Vietnam. America will back Turkey against Russia, but America is not going to have a full-on 2003-style invasion into uh, Russia or <clears throat> a, a, a military deployment into Ukraine. It's just not going to happen. But nonetheless, America is uh, giving all of the rhetoric that is expected of her. And uh, the United States has been talking about the Europeans. What are the EU states going to do about Russia? Uh, Denmark is supposedly going to send, or maybe they already sent the, these, I don't know, but Denmark um, is sending uh, fighter jets into Lithuania to uh, <clears throat> stand by in case of a Russian invasion into Ukraine. But <clears throat> people are asking about Germany. You know, what are the Germans doing? And this is, uh, it, it really leads to an interesting discourse on the subject of American-German relations. Because the Americans are wondering, why aren't the Germans doing anything about this? Why? Um, the Germans are even refusing to provide any sort of lethal weaponry, or, or really just weaponry. I mean, all weaponry is lethal. Uh, the Germans are refusing to send any sort of weaponry into Ukraine to help the Ukrainians. And uh, Estonia wanted to send in some old German uh, howitzers, I think they're called, to, uh, to Ukraine. And the Germans refused to allow them to do that. So why are the Germans adamant about not sending in weapons into Ukraine? The Ukrainians into Ukraine to help the Ukrainians. <clears throat> Some people say that it's because the Germans have a history of killing Russians. The Germans killed many Russians 
in both World War I and World War II. So if Germany sends weapons to Ukraine to help the Ukrainians, and those weapons are used to kill Russian soldiers, it could trigger back memories from the Second World War. And then the Russians would say, look, German weapons are killing us just as they did in uh, Stalingrad. <clears throat> now, I, for one, believe that this narrative is bullshit. I don't believe it. I think it's just garbage. Some uh, European intellectuals are making this sort of claim. They're making uh, this sort of argument saying, well, you know, the Germans are very sensitive about World War II and they don't want to bring back any sort of bad memories that the Russians may have from uh, the Second World War because, you know, Grandma Babushka could have a heart attack from PTSD. I mean, it's, it's bullshit, okay? <clears throat> How do I know that this is bullcrap? Because the Germans did not hesitate to arm and train the KLA uh, in uh, Kosovo in the 1990s. They did not mind German weapons killing, being used to kill Serbs in Kosovo during the most recent set of Balkan wars in the 1990s. They didn't care. The Germans trained the KLA, men whose grandparents were members of the SS who murdered Serbs and Jews and gypsies and anyone they didn't like. The Germans did not give a damn. Oh, Ted, it's West Germany. Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention that technicality. The West Germans, the Germans didn't give a damn uh, when they did that. The Germans didn't mind uh, uh, trying to uh, push the Americans to bomb Kosovo. Germans didn't care. I mean, was it not the Nazis who trained Albanians to be a part of the SS so they could go and murder Serbs and Jews and people they didn't like? So where was the, the concern about going, you know, triggering bad memories from the Second World War in the 1990s? And, it, and that was the 90s. That was, a, that, that was in a decade much closer to the time of the Second World War. I mean, hell, the, uh, the early 90s marked the end of the Cold War, and they also marked the end of the Gladio operation wherein American and European intelligence uh, uh, agencies were arming and training literal neo-Nazis to go out and kill people so they could blame the violence on the left, so they could spark a nationalist revolution against the Soviets, or uh, so, so they could rile up the, the European masses against the Soviet Union. So that is a bullcrap argument. I think, and this is just on the surface level, I believe that the Germans do not want to rock the boat with the Russians because of the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. I think that's an obvious dead giveaway. The Germans and the Russians, they've been talking about this Nord Stream 2 pipeline for years. They finally completed it. <clears throat> all that it, all that is uh, needed is for this pipeline to go into operation. That's all that's needed. They're just waiting for this thing to go into operation and then the Russians can export directly natural gas to Germany. And then Russia could be a major natural gas exporter to the rest of Europe. The Germans have been wanting this pipeline for a very long time. And the Russians obviously want it. The Ukrainians, they're terrified of this Nord Stream 2 pipeline because they know that once the Russians can export natural gas directly into Europe without having to go through Ukraine, the Ukrainians lose a lot of their geopolitical leverage because Ukraine, just like Poland, is a major uh, uh, gas transit uh, uh, region. <clears throat> it's a major place for, for uh, uh, tr uh, transitioning gas into Europe. So every time Russia has to export natural gas, they have to go through the Ukraine. They have to go through Poland. And the Russians have to pay Ukraine billions of dollars to get their gas through Ukraine and into Europe, into the EU. 
And so with that type of position, the Ukrainians have, they sort of have a place to argue for their demands, argue for concessions. Hey, you know, you need us to get your gas into Europe, so don't mess with us. Once that disappears, what argument does the Ukraine actually have? It loses a lot of its leverage. It loses a lot of its of its clout. And so that's why the Ukrainians are terrified. And the Germans know that <clears throat> if they rock the boat a little too much with the Russians, then that could uh, make relations between the Germans and the Russians kind of icy, and they don't want that. So I think that I, I, that's at least one of the reasons right? why. There could be other reasons why that we really don't know about, because there's a lot of things that go behind the curtains in politics that we really don't know about. And those things eventually, uh, they eventually appear above the surface, and then we can read about it, kind of like Gladio or uh, Operation Paperclip. Uh, but I think for now, that's we can point to that and say that's at least one of the reasons why. It's the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. I think that's obvious. Now, <clears throat> as in all types of alliances or diplomatic relations, things can dramatically and violently shift overnight. The Germans and the Russians, they can be allies or they can have diplomacy in one year, and then in the next year, things could explode. Because we have to remember, and I'm sure all of you guys know this, the Germans and the Russians have a very long history of killing each other. But they did make an alliance in the Second World War to rape Poland. And Russia, the Soviet Union, and the Third Reich, Germany, together, they gang-raped Poland. I mean, I hate to use such violent language, but that's what it was. Kind of like when we say, you know, the rape of Nanking. Japan invaded Nanking and raped the city. That's what the Soviets and the Germans did. And it was horrific. They murdered together millions of people. But then they became enemies. Because at the end of the day, the Germans and the Russians are two dogs fighting for the same bone. And I'm not saying that as a pejorative. I'm not saying, oh, yeah, Germans are dogs, Russians are dogs. But I'm using that as simply a, 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 an allegory. So I think eventually the, the Russians and the, and the Germans are going to be enemies like they were in the past. Uh, but another thing that I want to mention is how this is making, it's, it's shifting the relation between America and, and Europe into a, a, an, an icy one. It's frosting up American-German uh, relations because the Americans are saying, well, can we really rely on Germany? Because the Estonians are interested. The, the Danish don't like what Russia wants to do or what, what Russia is doing. Um, the Swedes are very worried about Russia, but the Germans are kind of, they're, they're, they're sitting in the middle. They're, uh, they're fence sitting. And the, now the Americans are saying, well, can we really rely on Germany? And the Germans have been saying the same thing for within, the, within recent years about America. Can we trust the Americans to protect us? So now, trust between the two countries is declining on both sides. Russian, uh, Germans are, are losing trust for the Americans. Americans are losing trust in the Germans. So the relation between Germany and the U.S. is becoming cold. And with such a with such cold relations, I think that this really indicates how the two countries are becoming more and more distant. And as that distance elongates, as, as it deepens, then Germany is going to become more and more rogue. Well, we can't trust the Americans and who cares? And America is becoming more and more isolationist every year. And then also... We have to remember that I, I, that during the Second World War, when the Russians, when the Soviets, and the Germans were involved in the Ukraine, the the Germans they trained insurgents, they trained paramilitaries, and those paramilitaries murdered and raped tens of thousands of people. And in Ukraine, 
we have to remember here, Ukraine is not exactly this innocent country either. I remember a few years ago, Poland, the Polish government, mentioned the fact that um, 100,000 uh, Polish people were murdered by Ukrainian nationalists during the Second World War. And I believe the Polish government classified the massacre as a genocide, that, these pe- that, that the Ukrainian nationalists wanted to do a genocide on the Polish people. That pissed off the Ukrainians. Ukrainians didn't like this. And they got mad at Poland. Well, why would you get mad at Poland for stating a historical fact unless you want to deny the past? Just as Turkey gets upset anytime the U.S. acknowledges the Armenian genocide or anytime Armenia wants to talk about the Armenian genocide. Turks don't like that. So the Ukrainians are kind of in a similar mentality. And remember that with the rise of Russian expansion and this desire for a revival of Russian empire and imperialism will also come alongside of that an intensification of Ukrainian nationalism. And when the Ukrainian nationalists become more and more prominent, they get more popular, they have more of a following, those people will become more emboldened. And remember, when Russia <clears throat> annexed Crimea and started getting involved in the Donbass, who did that give leverage to? Who did that give clout to? It emboldened the Ukrainian nationalists, right sector, Azov division, the Banderists, the people who follow Stefan Bandera. And those people committed atrocities during the 2014 uh, uh, unrest and in the eventual conflict itself. And during the Second World War, those very types of people, Ukrainian nationalists, they butchered around 100,000 or so Polish people. So, and, and, and I also have to include that one thing that certain media outlets are talking about right now is the rise of Ukrainian insurgencies. And how, if Russia decides to invade the Ukraine, more and and you know and and do further incursions into Ukraine how the Ukrainian government is ready to back insurgents how the United States government wants to back Ukrainian insurgents and they probably already have been backing up Ukrainian insurgents as preparation for this very thing and so with the rise of Ukrainian insurgents then you will have atrocities committed by these people because these insurgents are not all you know, waving the Ukrainian flag and saying, oh, we love America and we love freedom. These are people, many of whom, who love Bandera, Stefan Bandera, the the butcher of of, of Polish people during the Second World War. A lot of these people are neo-Nazis. A lot of these people are pagans. They are racist. They are blood and soil ultra-nationalists. These people are not to be trusted, and these people are not to be seen as peaceful freedom fighters. These are terrorists. These are butchers. And they will not hesitate to kill people. In fact, Ukrainian nationalists believe that there is an area of Poland that rightfully belongs to the Ukraine. And if unrest breaks out in Ukraine, Poland will also be on red alert, ready for any sort of, uh, ready for the, the conflict to boil over into Poland because Ukrainian nationalists believe that there's territory on the Polish-Ukrainian border that belongs to the Ukraine, and they wouldn't mind going into Poland and killing a bunch of people there. So, yeah. And and just as in Second World War, when you had the Nazis, the German Nazis supporting the Ukrainians um, <clears throat> to kill the Poles, I wouldn't doubt that Germany will do the same thing in the future backing Ukrainian insurgents to kill Polish people and Russians. So the way I look at it is is that we we just see history repeating itself. I mean, I know that sounds really cliche and trite, but that's just the bottom line. Anyway, guys, that's my assessment of this uh, situation. You guys just heard some theology. God bless.